Hey everyone, today we're going to be tearing apart an RX 470. So this is the Sapphire one. It is the card that we just reviewed, the Platinum Edition Sapphire card, which if you look at it, is basically an RX 480. And I can, I can see a fierce reflection on the camera, so I don't know what that's doing. But uh, this is basically a 480 reference design cooler with a backplate from Sapphire, and then it's been painted silver. So this is... Uh, basically an identical cooler to what we saw in our RX 480 teardown and hybrid build. This video is not going to be the beginning of a hybrid build for the 470. I'm not going to do one of those just like with the 1070. We're skipping this because it's basically the same card in that aspect with regard to cooling and, and things like that. And we're going to be looking at mostly the same parts. But I want to take this apart because I want to see the PCB uh, and I'm curious to see if it's the same as what we had with the 480. And uh, so we're just going to tear it down look over the PCB and that will pretty much be it for, for this video. So uh, basically same process as with the RX 480. You can see that they've removed the fake screws. There were fake screws here on the 480 reference cooler or shroud. Uh, those have been removed with the Sapphire version. And now we are left just with the usual backplate screws. So. Uh, so this, if, if it's not obvious, the cooler, the fan part of the cooler extends past the PCB, just like with the 480. Uh, so we've got this part here with obviously no PCB attached. Unlike what NVIDIA decided to do, this card and the 480 do not have the PCIe header at the end of the board, which means that we're not going to be dealing with the same sort of soldered wire setup where there's an extender wire that's been soldered to the PCB to put the, the power header at the end of the board. So we're not going to be looking at that here. This is a pretty simple design. How many more of these are there? Okay, these are very small. So for these, I'm just going to do opposing corners as, as we normally do. The back plate, I think, is actually loose and looks like Looks like it can come off. There's something hanging onto it. What is it? There it goes. Oh, thermal pad was hanging onto it. So the thermal pad sits right here. This looks like this is where the, the VRM is. You can see uh, the chokes or the inductors are planted here on the other side of the card. And then we've probably got a capacitor bank on the opposite side of this. And then the MOSFETs are probably on the opposite, or actually the MOSFETs are probably right there. That is almost certainly why the thermal pad was sitting there. So there's our back plate. Pretty standard stuff, just a piece of metal with a thermal pad. And actually, what is that over? Is that just a window? It's just a window. Uh, so let's get this retentioner off. Now we just got to get the card away, get the PCB away from the shroud and the cooler. We're still attached over here in these two screw points, which is for the expansion. Yeah, that's actually not uh, necessary to come out, but we're going to do it anyway. Dang it. All right, there we go. Wow, these fans, these fans really suck to disconnect. There it goes. So we've got the PCB and the shroud. It should be a very familiar sight if you saw our RX 480 tear down. Uh, we'll look at this in just a moment. It looks, I, I'll have to look at the footage. I don't remember if that was a copper, but I'm pretty sure that was a copper plate on the original. So the VRM has been lightened up a bit which if you look at the board, you see these two blank spots right here. So what we end up with is a four phase VRM instead of the six of the original RX 480. So it's been trimmed down, uh, which will probably explain some of our overclocking limitations Though I'm not positive on that. Uh, if that's, if you see our review, you'll see we're pretty limited on the overclock this time around. Uh, perhaps actually a hardcore overclocking will explain that better. He's got a good channel on that, but four phase, capacitor bank, and the MOSFETs. 
which also have been slimmed down. You can see a couple missing MOSFETs here. Save some money for AMD. And uh, other than that, we've got the usual VRAM modules. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight modules. That's interesting. Wait a minute. 4H24. 8 bits in a byte, 4 gigabits. So 1 gigabyte, 2 gigabytes, 3 gigabytes, 4 gigabytes. Okay, cool. There are eight modules here, obviously. This is a 4 gigabyte card. So uh, knowing that, they're obviously either going to be 1 gigabyte chips that are locked down, like the RX 480, or they're going to be half that density, 512 megabyte chips, and you end up with 1 gigabyte for every two. So if we look this model number up, for reference, the number is uh, SK Hynix, Hynix, and it's, let's see, I have it on my phone, H5GC4H24AJR. And looking at their website, that is 4 gigabit uh, density, 16 banks. So GDDR5, obviously, 4 gigabit density. Uh, so what you end up with is with 8 bits in a byte, you have 4 gigabits, 8 gigabits, that's 1 gigabyte, 1, <laughs> 2, three, four. So four gigabytes total uh, VRAM. So this card is not one where like the RX 480, you, you were able to unlock from four to eight with the VBIOS sort of hack. This isn't something that that'll work for because these chips are physically not one gigabyte chips. So they can't unlock to anything else other than obviously what their native density is. Uh, so that's, that's what we've got for VRAM, for the VRM, kind of described that a little bit. And the rest, uh, extra phase over here for memory, six pin power header, uh, plug for the fan, and that's it. That's everything we've got for the PCB itself. Let's pull this thing out and look at that if I can see. There's a, what's holding it in the way? Oh, nothing. Uh, thermal pads, obviously connector for the VRM blower fan, or just the blower fan in general, I guess does more than VRM cooling. And we've got this sink for uh, the MOSFETs, this sink on the other side of the capacitors, uh, and then this for VRAM cooling. So that's the cooling setup, very simple, exactly the same as the, the 480. This block should look pretty similar as well. Same block, looks like identical block uh, of just aluminum fins. There's no heat pipes in here, nothing special. It's just an old school aluminum fin style heat sink. And then you've got your plate, your cold plate here that touches the GPU silicon directly. So they've gotten rid of the copper circle. You know what would be a really interesting test is taking that one and putting it on here and seeing if it's actually different. Yeah, same thing other than the uh, original cooler or the heat sink had a copper circle in the middle. So uh, this actually, if we wanted to, we could take the original RX 480 sink and drop it right there and test the thermals on that as well. And we even have a thermal paste applicator that would make sure the thermal paste is applied exactly the same on each surface. So there would be no variance in application. Uh, but I don't think we're going to have time to do that. But maybe, maybe in the future. Uh, so that's it. That's everything that the RX 470 has to offer, at least this version of it. This, this is a partner card, just as a reminder. This isn't, uh, there's, there's no reference RX 470, so to speak. It is only partner cards. That means they'll vary a little bit anyway. Some of the vendors have custom PCBs. Some of them are insane and are selling their card at $240, which really makes no sense at all. Don't buy those. Uh, but those ones certainly would have, well, hopefully would have custom PCBs. <laughs> they definitely have custom coolers. Uh, this, however, is a reference RX 480 cooler on a card that is pre-overclocked by 10 megahertz, netting zero difference. <laughs> and uh, the cooler is the same cooler that was on the RX 480 reference card. So there you have it. This is, this is basically, here's, here's something that we didn't talk about in the review. I didn't have the prices of these things when the review went live. The RX 470 has an MSRP of $180, which as we said that in the review is pretty good. This card is selling at $200. And I suppose the, the defense there for buying 
one of these as opposed to a $200 4 gigabyte RX 480, which would give you about a 10% performance difference. Uh, I think the argument is, well, it's pre-overclocked, so it's worth an extra $20. And also, I guess it's silver. I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not really sure if there's an argument for the cooler. But I think the argument is that it's pre-overclocked. Here's the thing, as we show in the frequency over time charts, it's still going like crazy frequency. It's not huge swings. It's less than 100 megahertz swings. But the point is you're not actually sustaining that 12, 16 megahertz advertised boost. It's peaking there maybe a couple times per test that we did. The average is still closer to the 1200, 1206 range of the sort of advertised AMD spec. So the 10 megahertz overclock, first of all, 10 megahertz uh, is not something to brag about or charge $20 for. Secondly, it's not really sustaining it anyway because the cooler is throttling at 78 degrees Celsius. Every time it hits 78, the frequency drops until the cooler hits 77 or 76, and then it maintains at that point. Uh, so the, the point of this sort of junction at the end here is that the uh, platinum edition of the RX 470 at $200, which is what it's selling for, with four gigabytes of locked VRAM, meaning you can't unlock it to eight, a reference RX 480 cooler, and a pre-overclock that is frankly irrelevant in the scheme of things, it makes no sense to buy this. It would make more sense to buy an RX 480 four gigabyte card, even though in the review I said skip that one because they're the same price. When they're the same price, the original argument becomes a little bit less valid. Now, in terms of the RX 470 as a product, the review still stands, conclusion still stands. There are $180 versions out there. The power color one is the one I would point you toward, and it has a better cooler. Uh, and we'll hopefully be reviewing that soon. So that's the one to look at right now. I know a couple other vendors have models out. We have an MSI one that just came in. Not sure what it costs, but uh, some, some extra thoughts that add on to the review that we didn't publish originally because we didn't have all the pricing data at that time. $180, goodbye. $200? It's, I'm almost offended that the cooler is what it is, but I mean, thermal is, is a lot of what we do, so it's easy for me to get offended at thermal. Uh, but as always, Patreon link will post a video. If you want to see more information, subscribe. To see more content like this, the RX 460 is coming up next. We'll see you all next time.